Yes, my people, as the heart, it don't happen. No, happen in life. I believe that article and tell people there as a crime because Peter B is live in Chinese TV. Look now, watch as Peter B take clear the air concerning those people when they talk say all bar of Lagos bounce Peter B go back and concerning the attack on the obedient family. Please, obedient family, just they hit this like button so that my Facebook for recommending this video give other people and other obedience when they see her, and share this video and comment obedience in the comment section. Please. Make sure you share and hit the like button when I watch them. We'll be speaking with uh, Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, who joins us live from Ikoyi area of Lagos. Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Obi. Uh, Your Excellency, I appreciate your time for, for us tonight. And I like it, it does look to me that your business in Lagos from Saturday was not quite done as you went back to Lagos, uh, specifically now to some markets. You were at the Alaba International Market on Saturday. Today you were at the Computer Village and you also went to the Ladipo Market. These are major markets in Lagos. Was there any reason why you, you chose this market or the reasons why you went back to Lagos? I'm not sure you've had any rally across the country where you focus on one state for uh, two consecutive days or two days. Well, sir, you've not been following me. I've campaigned in every state of Nigeria. I've visited every state of Nigeria, 36 states, and the capital territory, Abuja. So you can say 37. And I've gone to some states twice, thrice. I was in Borno, Medugri. I was in Borno, South View, which nobody have ever been to. I was in Gombe. And I was in Gombe South, Katungu. I was in Karuna, and I was in Karuna South. I was in Adamawa, I went to Mubi, I went to Newman, and I went to back to Newman just now, uh, on Saturday. So, quite frankly, there's so many other places I've been to wires and tries, and it will continue like that. But my reason for going to the markets are very simple. I've always said, we need to be able to go back from consumption to production. And you can't talk about doing that without having routes to market where the markets are functional and everything. And I need to interact with traders and business people and business industrialists, agriculturalists, and everything, learning what are their problems and being able to promise them of better times to come. Interesting. Um, is there anything in particular that you have called yourself a trader? Uh, but I mean, you perhaps know, since you say you're a trader, you perhaps know uh, the circumstances around trading in Nigeria. And when you visit this market, there are communities of people who are interested in commerce and mid, uh, small and medium uh, scale enterprises. Is there anything in particular that you have in plan, a part of your manifesto agenda, should you be elected as Nigeria's next president, for these uh, medium-scale uh, and uh, small-scale businesses? So, the greatest employer of labor, the greatest productive area in any economy I've studied is micro, small, medium enterprises. You can go and take a study from various countries, even in first world countries, talk less of world, third world countries. The countries that the people use as exemplary today, and I always go for the ones with big numbers, from China to India to Indonesia, all of them are driven, their economy are all driven by this sector. In a country like Indonesia, almost over 90% of the businesses are in this sector. In terms of employment, they are creating over 70% of the employment. In China, over 60%. In terms of productive exports, everything, in China, over 60%. Indonesia, the same thing. Similar situation in Vietnam. These are countries that are doing very well today and are very productive and export geared. So I believe that this you need to study listing 
to this section because they will propel what we want to achieve and for me the commitment is to pull people out of poverty that is measurable what governments in Nigeria have not done in the past is to look at when they come in where they are standing for example in 2012 our unemployment is about 10 percent between 10 and 12 percent today it's at the 335 so i mean our our monetary poverty was 55 million 33 percent today is about 40 something percent at 95 million of course our uh, multi-dimensional poverty has then increased to 133 million so these are things you need you need to say if in 2023 a new government comes in we need to draw a line this is where we stand and start implementing those things you think that can start reversing the situation and reducing a funding like our poverty unemployment inflation in a more in an organized measurable way that people can feel it uh mr obi i'd like to know um with your experience trading and some of the figures you have reeled out tonight um i know there are loads and loads of uh, markets and commercial hubs across the country in your own uh, anambra state your home state you have the onicha which is a major market uh, you also have uh, another one where uh, your brother um, senator uh, uba is from uh, his own village or town also is is, uh, is a major market now you go to other area markets about markets in abia state uh, these are major commercial hubs and to Lagos, Alaba International Market, Ladipo, uh, Spear Parts, uh, Computer Village, where almost every uh, solution or almost every problem to your tech problems can be resolved at a computer village. But most of these markets are not standardized in terms of the trade and the manner in which they engage uh, their, their consumers and perhaps the opportunity to even um, export. Now, I was reading earlier the possibility of Jama Jamaica even taking uh, cars from Innocent Motors in Anambra State to Jamaica. This is some good news. Is there any plan that you're thinking that all of these markets will be standardized and to be ready for international trade of some sort? So, it is the government. It is the physical support of the government that makes it possible for this not markets, but the micro small businesses I mentioned to be able, I've said what we're going to do when we talk about moving from consumption to production. I said we will ensure first that we deal with the issue of security of life and property. By securing the country, we will be able to take back our farmers back to farm increase the agricultural production because our food lands that are not producing today with that we will supply our industry and make them export oriented and that comes to where you're going to take this market by ensuring that they are, what they are producing in terms of manufacturing and everything is export oriented for example i was in Aba last friday and i didn't mention to them that in 2021, our oil export for me is an average of about 15 billion. I don't have the accurate number. But that in the same year, Vietnam exported footwear of more than that figure. It's about 17, 18 billion. And in Aba, we have about 60,000 shoe of footwear makers, shoemakers. And they're just 30 to 50 kilometers away from the sea in Port Harcourt. And I'll, give, I'll support them, give them access to export. 
This is critical. We have in the same Abba area people who are involved in tailoring and all sorts of clothing, garments manufacturing, and both Vietnam and Bangladesh exported clothing more than the entire Nigerian export in 2021. Our entire export in 2021 was 18.9 trillion naira. Vietnam did about 32 billion worth of clothing exports. Bangladesh was about 36,000. If you divide our 18.9 trillion naira with 650, by this I put an average of your official rate, your black market rate, and do some arithmetic which I say is the average rate. I can give it. If you divide it by that, my average rate, it comes about $30 billion. That's what your entire export is. So both countries did more in clothing than your entire export. And you have so many people who can be involved in that section of trade for export. Imagine if we're able to earn such money in export today. Imagine if we can increase our foodware export. Imagine if we can do more on agricultural export, food export and everything. By the time you combine and support it with your oil and gas export, you will increase your reserve, which will drive your rates. You'll be able to bring this rate we're talking about from the size of today to a manageable level. And there will be foreign exchange available for inputs, machineries, and other areas which will help to expand our economy. Let me, uh, let me take on a few issues. Uh, I'll come back to the issue of the economy because there's so much to talk about that and even the security, uh, human capital development. Um, when you went to Lagos for the rally on Saturday, your critics and the opposition uh, came out to criticize your inability to visit the traditional rulership in Lagos. And uh, they have uh, drawn a lot of uh, inferences on that uh, issue. Uh, was there any reason why you are unable to visit them just like it's almost customary uh, that when presidential candidates are going to major cities, they go and uh, first pay homage to traditional rulership in those communities? What exactly is the true picture of things? Sharon, I've lived in Lagos for a long time and everybody knows that I have the utmost respect for all of Lagos and I've always done so to every other traditional rulers. My rural fathers have, the, for me, they are my fathers and I respect them. Wherever I go for rallies, I've been to 36 states of the Federation. It is usually the local people that organize our rally and tell us where to go. And everybody knows that on my arrival in Lagos, I did ask that I want to visit the Oba woman I regard as a father, figure any time in nowhere you know and this is not the this is not the only place it happened i've been to a few states where the emir the ob or the oba was not readily available so mine is to apply to visit them on a new date it's not this is not the only place but you know people when they're looking for you or they want to go they try to capitalize in one way or the other some even said oh that like he refused to see me or didn't want to see is not true. The truth is that when we arrived, we wanted to do what we used to do, arrive and drive to the palace and see the Oba of the Emir. And we're told he is not readily available, you know, that we should apply and come at some other date. And that we intend to do because it remains a highly respected father to me and to the entire nation and i will have to do so there's no issue with that so if i get it clearly mr Obi, are you, were you able to personally reach out or are you willing to do that 
uh, to reach out to oh, would, uh, make I, these I, uh, I, I, clear I, to the I, I traditional uh, institution I, in Lagos. I would, do I would do that shame. I said it's not the only place. There's other states we have visited that we are not able to see the traditional. There's so many places. Even when I visited him, you know, I've not been able to see the traditional rulers in Imo State. So I can tell you there's so many places in the northern and went. The Emir was not readily available. You know? And we are, we are not, it is not an issue. Um, something that was in very pleasant happened in Lagos on Saturday where we saw some of your supporters uh, uh, being attacked. Give us an understanding of what happened. Have you taken that matter up? What really went went on? Uh, how many? What is the casualty level? What are you? What are you hearing? What did you tell the authorities? Well, Sean, I left that. Um, I've expressed my concern, which I'm sure you've read, and I've appealed to all that are involved. Let's have very peaceful campaigning, peaceful election. Our desperation should be on how we can get Nigeria working for all Nigerians, especially the poor suffering masses. And not for us to be desperate about continuing with our transnational politics, but desperation on how we can start turning around the suffering of Nigerians. Our party, Labour Party, has taken that on Ordered it while appealing that such should not continue. So, um, sustained with what happened in Lagos, uh, there were peace accord and uh, signing agreement with the peace committee that uh, politicians and political parties will conduct themselves in a very peaceful manner. What is the implication of what happened in Lagos? We've seen some of these things also happen in some other states. What are your biggest fears about these kind of violence that happened? Uh, much of those verbal violence are happening on social media, but it seems to have gotten out of the social media on the streets of Nigeria. What are the implications and what is your biggest concern about this? So for me, even the verbal ones on social media should not be there. We don't need to have any form of abuse or Accusations, false accusations, anything. For me, it should not exist. Physical or verbal, social media or otherwise. We should have election that is based on issues, campaign that is based on issues, discussing our problems. Nigeria have huge enormous problems that are besetting it that we should occupy our campaigns with. You can have a situation where you're the poverty capital of the world, one of the most insecure places on the surface of the earth. It, your primary health care has collapsed. You're now 168 out of 170 something or 178 on who medical um, WHO health and uh, numbering. So there's so much we can talk about. There's so much that would be to be a problem. Our human capital is very low and everything, your youths are every day looking for a way to leave the country because they have because of sense of hopelessness and everything. So these are things that should worry us. Not issue of any form of verbal attack or physical attack anything i urge those who are my supporters please do not engage in that and i urge, plead with other contestants to please plead with their supporters and those who are working for them to so this from that we have a huge problem let's deal with it all i want is to get nigeria to start working again everybody i'll take you up on this your lagos trip and also um you you went visiting the area on a kankan for of yoruba land uh Ghani adams 
uh, where you told him about your plan of uniting Nigeria and you made promise of restructuring. Some of your allies and some of your friends who are campaigning for you, like uh, the Middle Belt Forum, uh, Afeni Ferry, the Pandev, these are some of the proponents of restructuring Nigeria. The manner of uh, their own approach to the issue of restructuring, because by definition, restructuring now means different things to different people. Um, if you look at the radical approach uh, the likes of Chiva Yadibanjo has preached about the issue of restructuring when he said, not only when Nigeria has been properly restructured before we can get the kind of the desired development, what do you mean, what is the Peter Obi's concept of restructuring? And if you really mean it, how soon, how fast are you hoping to get down to the ground and uh, get this issue of restructuring working? Should you be elected president? So Nigeria is already Federal Republic of Nigeria. So you first need to have true federalism, as it's being practiced in other nations of the world. When we talk about the issue of restructuring, we're talking about trying to, this is not going to be something that I'm going to do by presidential fiat or this. It is something that we all need to sit down and talk and go through the process of rule of law in doing that. But I can assure you, we need to structure, we all have factor endowment that will make the country work. Some of those who are even against structuring, even if you are structuring, will benefit more. For example, I've always said it consistently, the biggest physical assets of Nigeria is all cultivated land in the north. We can make more money, far more money than we earn from oil or gas from agriculture. If we do the right things. We have, we say we live on 923,000 square kilometers of land, which the vast land Arab land and the lot. And we're 200 million people. Tiny country like Netherlands that have just live on, without water, live on 33,000 square kilometers of land. Which, if we were to donate land to them, might not be from Nigeria. We remove 33,000 33, from our 923, so we will still have 890,000 left. If we were to give them even human beings, they are 74, 17.4 million in population. And we are about 220, actually. So we we'll give them, we have still have 200 million people left. The agricultural export in 2021 is 103 billion euros, about 120 billion dollars. That is four times our entire export when you divide 18.9 trillion by 650 naira because your parallel market today is about 750. So you find out that it's three times your entire export. And you have that vast land that is uncultivated. So for me, that vast land can give us far more than we're earning from oil today and cultivating it is something that I'm focused on. I want to put people out of poverty, especially in the North, by ensuring that we put in the resources that will ensure that that vast land is cultivated. First, we will feed ourselves, which will drive down our inflation, because it was contributed to inflation today is food inflation. Two will lead to manufacturing and lead to export, which will in turn, like I said before, increase our reserve and drive down our rate of exchange. These are things restructuring will come. Then those from Niger Delta today we will be able to use the resources that we're going to generate from 
further production of oil and gas area to be able to develop, clean up the environment, bring them back to agricultural and other uh, food productive areas like fishing and everything. That's what the laws we can do if we do the right things.